Good morning. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann's seat in Catholic Church. Today we observe the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you to join us in singing the hymns and acclamations along with the antiphon at the beginning of the communion processional. And in case you've been wondering, I'm going to explain about the communion antiphon. It's a short passage from scripture set to music and sung just after we have said the prayer, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. The antiphon is part of the proper of the mass, which contains the prayers and the readings that are specific to the day. The text for the antiphon can be found immediately after the gospel reading in Breaking Bread. So when we read the gospel today, please look for it. When it's time to sing the antiphon, we treat it the way we do a psalm response. Dustin's going to play the, the antiphon melody, then we will sing the antiphon, and then we will invite you to join us when we repeat it. So when we come to that time at Mass, I hope you will give that a try. This morning we also welcome all of you who are joining us through our live stream. Please go to our website at www.seatoncatholicchurch.org to find a link to the readings and a worship aid. As is our custom, we have a time of sung prayer before Mass begins, so we would like to invite you to join us now in singing from Breaking Bread number 434, All the Earth, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 6. Number 434, All the Earth, verses 1, 3, and 6. We are ready to begin. Would you please join us now in singing number 320, Let Us Go to the Altar. Number 320, Let Us Go to the Altar.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We move back to ordinary time now, at the conclusion of Christmas, and we follow the ministry of Jesus as it unfolds in the Gospels. And today we hear how he calls his disciples, John the Baptist, recognizes him, and some of his own followers choose to follow Jesus. So Jesus' ministry is taking place. His disciples are growing. Let us begin by asking the Lord to call us to follow him, something he does each and every day. But because of our sins, we sometimes resist that call. Let's ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy for the times that we have not responded. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God. You govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'd like our boys and girls now to come forward for their liturgy of the word. So you guys are back in school now? Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, that's right. It's a holiday. Yeah. Boys and girls, if you want to talk to a friend who lives a long ways away, like in Los Angeles, and you're here, how do you talk to them? Yeah. Uh, on the phone. On the phone. How else can you talk to people today? Letters. A letter. Okay, very good. You could text them and use social media, right? How many of you text messages? I no. have a phone. You don't have a phone. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you don't want it. <laughs> yeah. You can also drive there. So you could drive there. Okay. So before telephones, how did you talk to people? Like your friends? Yes. Huh? Yeah? Good. How else? A phone booth, okay, you could talk to the phone booth. You had to put money in the phone then. Yeah, and then sometimes you had a phone on the wall in your house, but just one phone, you could talk to one person at a time, right? And it rang, yeah. What else would you do, like in the old days before telephones? How did people talk to each other? By going to their house. By visiting them or by writing them a letter, right? Yeah, and what happened, how did people send letters in the old days, before cars, before airplanes? How did you get a letter to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, so there would be a male, a person who'd work for the post office, but maybe he rode a horse and he carried all the letters, or maybe it was in a, uh, you're right, huh? A bike, maybe, it was a bike, yeah, could be. Yeah, before cars, though, like stagecoach with horses, and they keep all the mail, and they would have to go. Take a long time. The reason I'm asking you that question, because in the times of the Bible, before the phone, before letters, before anything else, God called people. How did God call people? How did he speak to them? How, did he, how could he talk to his people? Did he call them on the phone? No. Did God write a letter to somebody? No. Did he go on social media? No. So what you're going to learn, I'm going to let the teachers tell you, how does God speak to people? Even today, how does he speak to us? Okay? Um, I know another yeah. way to send people um, a letter. You put in the mailbox and then a postman comes and picks it up from the mailbox and then he rides on the horseback. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So you write a letter, you put it in the post of the mailbox, then the guy comes on the horse and picks it up, and then he takes it to the other person. That's kind of that's kind of the way it used to be, right? Okay. Now I'm gonna we have to send you out so you can learn about how God talks to us, how God calls us. You got it. May the word of God strengthen you. May the word of God nourish you. May the word of God comfort you all your life. May it be your light in darkness as you walk the path of faith. May the word of God strengthen you. May the word.
A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord, and it will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside of the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? whom you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. just want to apologize ahead of time. I'm fighting a cold this weekend. My lozenge in my mouth and my water. Just in case something happens, there's a defibrillator in the closet there. <laughs> Hopefully we never have to use that. Have you ever been in bed at night? It's dark, it's quiet, and you hear a noise. And you've never heard that noise before. So you're thinking to yourself, what was that noise? And maybe your imagination starts to run away and you start thinking, maybe it's somebody's trying to get into the house. So you wake up your spouse. You say, honey, I think someone's trying to break in the house. I hear a noise. So he gets up, going to look around, carries a baseball bat with him maybe or something worse and goes to the darkened house looking. Then he comes back and says, honey, there's nothing. 
I, I don't know where that, what that noise was. Going back to bed, and if some time later you hear it again. You say, honey, I'm sure somebody's trying to break into the house, please. So he gets up, and assuming it's the husband, right? And looking around, now peering outside the windows to see maybe there's somebody in the front of the home or something like that. And finally, after a while, he comes back. He goes, oh, the wind is blowing, and there's a branch on the tree that's scraping the side of the house. That's what we're hearing. Oh, okay, that's good. That noise will be heard again, but because they are now familiar with that noise and the source of the noise, they can rest easy, no worries. Now, it's not so easy for those like me who live alone, okay? I hear an unknown sound at night coming from the, I don't have the benefit of saying to my wife, get up and look and see what's going on. <laughs> you know? When I was pastor in Fresno, I may have told you this story. I lived in a small apartment that was attached to the church, kind of traditional setting, but it was a split level apartment. My bedroom was upstairs. And because it was attached to the church, I could look out my window and see the roof of the church. It was flat. One night I'm in bed, probably one or two in the morning, and I hear a sound and I wake up. And it's the sound of like grunting or somebody stressing or I don't even know how to describe it. And I knew something was up because my cat, which usually slept on the bed, jumped off and ran down the stairs. So much for the uh, watch cat, okay? <laughs> and so I sat in bed and I kept hearing this noise coming from across my room. And as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw two arms in my window. And I had the old crank up window. You'd crank it and it would open like that. This guy had put his hands, I kept it open, I guess. He put his arms there and was trying to pull it up, not knowing that it was a bedroom probably. That's when my heart started beating. And I finally just yelled out, who are you? And I heard him fall to the top of the roof and I could hear footsteps running away. I ran out of bed and I opened up, turned on all the lights in the house and outside. I had a kind of a skinny baseball bat that I kept there. And so I'm just waiting inside. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't know where the guy was. No, I waited like 20 minutes just sitting there. And then I figured, well, he's gone. So I decided to go back to bed. But every little noise I heard after that, I was awake. It took me a couple of days to kind of get beyond that. And eventually had a security screen put on that particular window. We hear things all the time. There's so many noises around us, but sometimes there are sounds we are not familiar with. And when we hear something that we've not heard before, we may start listening more intently to figure out what or who is causing that sound. So think about young Samuel in today's first reading. As part of the backstory, there was a woman named Hannah. She was married. She was without children. And when you meet her in the book of Samuel, she is crying, crying, pleading to God to give her a son. Finally, her prayers are heard. She conceives a son. And she had promised the Lord that if he gave her a son, she would dedicate him to the Lord. So when the son became old enough, she takes him to the temple and turns him over to the priests there who would raise him in the temple, raise him to serve as a priest. And that's where the story begins for us. The young Samuel is lying in bed one night and he hears the sound of somebody calling his name. And he gets up thinking it must be the old priest, Eli. So he tells Eli, here I am. So what do you want? Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. It happens a second time. And the third time he goes to Eli and says, you're calling my name. Then Eli, the priest, recognizes that what Samuel is hearing is God's voice, this quiet voice in the darkness speaking to Samuel. And he tells Samuel, go to bed, and if you hear your name being called again, say, speak, Lord, I am listening. I am listening. Notice it's not just a matter 
of Samuel hearing the voice, but Eli tells him, you must listen. There's a big difference between hearing something and listening to something. How many times have you told your spouse, did you hear what I said? And they say, yeah, I heard you, but you're not listening, right? Or how many times do you tell your children, why aren't you listening? They say, well, I hear you, I heard you the first time. But why are you not listening? Because listening means you're taking what you hear to heart and to mind, and you're processing what you are hearing. You're taking the words to a deeper level so that you can respond, but you can only respond if you are truly listening. As Christians, we believe we have a God who speaks to us. We're told that God calls us by our name. He's the one who initiates a relationship with us. <clears throat> he calls out to us. So many stories in the Bible of how God speaks to people. He called Abraham, maybe in his heart. I don't know how it happened. And Abraham listened. He got up and took his wife and the clan. They moved to the promised land. God called Moses out of a burning bush. How it happened and what Moses heard, we don't know. But Moses listened and he went to Egypt to rescue the Hebrew people. God called prophets all the time. How he spoke to them, we don't know. But they heard, they listened, and they went to preach the gospel, whatever he wanted them to say to the people of Israel. Sometimes the call is very dramatic. Think of Saul, who was a persecutor of Christians. He was on a horse going to arrest some Christians, and he was struck by a blinding light, knocked to the ground, and he heard the voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he finds out that is the voice of Jesus, the risen Christ. And then St. Paul, he becomes St. Paul, listens to the words of Christ, converts, and becomes the, the main person to proclaim the gospel. So we believe that this is not just something in the past that God used to speak to people. No, it continues even today because God invites us to enter into a conversation, a relationship with him. He wants to hear from us, and he knows that we desire to hear from him. And Jesus himself is continually saying to people, follow me, follow me. But you hear a lot of people say, oh, I've never heard God speaking to me. I've never heard the Lord speaking to me. Well, that's because most people are not good listeners. In a world of so many noises and voices, many people do not know how to distinguish between what is secular and what is sacred. I think a lot of people tend to listen more to social media influencers or celebrities. They're more attentive to these people than to the voice of the church, let's say, or to the voice of really holy and upright people. Now, we cannot hear the Lord speaking to us if our lives are filled with noise and distraction. Each of us, you know, we all have inner voices that are competing for attention. And so much of what we hear outside and within says, eat, drink, be merry, do your own thing, take care of yourself, be the master of your own destiny, and so on. And these voices can drown out the voice of the Lord, who's speaking to us in a very different way, telling us, pray, do not be afraid, repent, be humble, love your neighbor, assist the poor, and so on. There are a lot of stories, and some of us may have those stories, how people experience God's call and how when they really chose to listen and be attentive, they learned something from this conversation that they could carry on with God. One story has to do with a professional woman. She was a smart lady. She graduated from the top university in New York and then went to work for an uh, investment firm, financial investment firm, high-powered business. And she had demonstrated keen business skills. So she was really at the top of her game. 
But the problem was the job was very demanding, long hours, a lot of stress and anxiety. And she didn't have time for herself to do anything. Her whole life was her job. One day, she said, I need some space here. So she called in sick, and she decided she was going to take a walk through her neighborhood, get some fresh air, clear her mind. And on her way, she passed a church. She had seen that church many times driving by, but she never took notice of it. But now she's walking by, and she hears some organ music playing inside. So she says, well, I'm going to take a peek. So she went inside. She was not a religious woman in any way, never raised in any church. But something led her to go inside to listen to this music that she had heard. So she took a seat near the back and just sat there listening for a while. And as she was listening, she was looking around at all the sacred art, the tabernacle, the crucifix. She didn't know what a lot of it meant, but it kind of appealed to her. Then she said, oh, I'm going to keep walking and explore this place. And she walked outside and came to a kitchen, and she saw a lot of people in there making sandwiches and putting the sandwiches in brown bags and bottles of water and hygiene products and stuff like that. Interesting. Then she walked a little further and came to like a church garden. She saw some people putting flowers at the base of a large statue of the Blessed Mother. Anyway, after returning to her apartment later on, she sat down and she was thinking to herself, that was really beautiful. And she noticed how she had felt kind of a wave of peace, kind of, you know, washing over her as she was looking at all these things in this church. And at that moment, she said to herself, I think I need a change. Sometime later, she inquired at that church. How do you become a member of this church? And she ended up in the RCIA program. Then, some years later, after she had converted, she met a man who she married. And now they have children. And when people inquire about her sudden change of careers, she simply says, well, I think God called me to something new. I heard God calling me to make a change. She may not have realized at the time that she went on her walk that God was speaking to her heart in the music, in the sacred art she saw, in the people who were putting things together for the homeless, and in the people who were placing flowers at the statue of Our Lady. Somehow God was speaking to her heart. She heard it, and she pondered and listened to what it might mean and she responded to the Lord, who was basically saying to her, follow me. My friends, God is continually trying to have a conversation with us. He wants to share with us the good news of how much he loves us. He wants to guide us into a meaningful and spiritual life. Do we hear his voice? Can we discern the ways in which God is speaking to us? And are we really listening? And if we listen, then what have we got to lose by saying, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let us now profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be, not made 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Just as God speaks to us, so too we can speak to God about our needs and the needs of others. Let us do so with faith that he truly hears and answers us. And we pray that the church will remain strong in its ministry to proclaim the gospel to all people. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. That God will call more young people to serve the church as priests, deacons, and religious, and they will respond with faith. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. That those who do not know God will seek him with all sincerity and come to know his presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our world, torn by division and conflict, will be healed, and that nations will work together to bring peace to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who are struggling with ill health may receive comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that all who have died will enjoy new life forever, especially Shirley Whitman, Irene Seal, Rogelio Fernandez Jr., and all who are being remembered in our weekend masses. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pause to make our personal petitions known in silence of their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers. Extend your mercy towards us this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare our gifts, please join us in singing number 501, Come Follow Me. Number 501, Come Follow Me. Yeah. 
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy Grant, O Lord, that we may participate worthily in this mystery, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice here is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Out of compassion for our waywardness, Christ humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout this world, bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Elizabeth, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now pray together as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only save me. Number 477, because the Lord is my shepherd.
Number 341, Behold the Lamb. Number 341.
Please take a copy of the bulletin home with you when you leave here today so you can stay informed about what's happening here in the parish. And we invite you outdoors. We have a lot of donuts and coffee and punch to uh, share from fellowship. And uh, just a reminder, the office will be closed tomorrow in commemoration of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Have a good holiday for those of you who have one, okay? Let's now stand and close in prayer. Pour out upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this heavenly bread one in mind and heart. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Master said it. Let us go and glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us now in singing number 383, Take the Word of God with you. Number 383, Take the Word of God with you. <laughs> 